Uh, we're here in the Grand Hotel in Oslo with um, uh, John Petrucci from Dream Theatre, who are playing tonight in the uh, Spectrum venue. And uh, it's uh, well, welcome to town, first of all. Thank you. This is your maybe third or fourth time playing Spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. We've uh, we've come to Norway many times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's beautiful out today. It's, it it's is really. It's, it's, it's for this time of year, especially. Yeah. You know? um, now, um, I think it's quite interesting myself that you're playing a venue um, like Spectrum because it's a big place, you know, um, and you've done it several times, so it's obviously working out quite well. And uh, so this is a, a successful kind of venture, it has been for you, and kind of the, the new album seems to be continuing on with that because it's, um, it's had a very impressive uh, uh, chart entry in the States. Yeah. Um, so we'll just start off asking briefly about the new album. I mean, a lot of people um, have refer to it as not a return to form but as, as being something that pleases a, a lot of people that are, like different aspects of, of the band so um, I mean for, for you guys is it uh, after this long and, and so many albums I mean does this album is, is there more with this album than for example Train of Thought or did you feel there's something there was something when you were doing it something more to this than you had felt for a while um, you know every album that we do we approach as uh, as if it's a new you know opportunity mm. for us to put our best foot forward. You know, we we try to um, play our best. We try to produce it our best yeah. and write the best songs. Uh, sometimes the the concept for the direction changes a little bit. Um, but uh, even even if you have a specific concept, um, it's hard to really. Fully direct where it's going to go. Yeah, it's kind of like you never know how it's going to end up. And uh, you know. but, but, but this one in, in particular, now you've had um, you're one of the very few bands. Um, I must point out, um, you know, the record sales are declining everywhere. Okay, mm -hmm. um, but you're one of the few bands that I can think of right now, especially playing heavier music, where your initial, uh, you, you know, your first week, your first week sales figures in the states have increased. Uh, it's I mean, pretty incredible. You know, we we've been together for almost 25 years, mm -hmm. and yeah, our chart position was number six yeah. uh, in our first week, and that was the highest we've ever charted. So it kind of blew us away. It, it is quite amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it was uh, number one on the European charts. It was number one in Finland, you know, which is it's it's wild. You know, um, we've been doing this for a long time, and yet we continue to grow and we continue to. Uh, to attract new fans, yeah. and I, I think that because probably because of the way we've done it, you know, that it's kind of like this slow building, um, which obviously doesn't happen overnight. But you end up gaining really um, uh, passionate and dedicated fans. It's, it's kind of like the way that things don't happen so much anymore. Yeah, you know? it's very difficult for that to happen. A lot of bands they kind of come and go in an yeah. album or two, you know. So we're very fortunate. I wonder about uh, the new album. Uh, why was there an instrumental version? Why was there an instrumental version? Um, with, with us, because we're not uh, a very commercial band, um, our like I think our fans kind of really have come to expect different things from us. You know, we we do cover albums here and there. Um, we change our set all the time. And one of the things that we did this time is we offered some different versions of the album. So we, we did uh, obviously the full album, the instrumental version, the isolated tracks, uh, and um, a whole album of covers. And, and I think it, it kind of, um, it's, it's our sort of gift to our fans for, for staying with us. And, and I think our fans really they like things like that, you know. We're not the type of band that just we just put out the album and it it uh, sells millions and millions. It just doesn't work that way. And so we like to build on our strengths. And a lot of people like the instrumental side of the band. So uh, per personally, when I heard it, uh, I was like, yeah, you can you can notice the mus 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 musicianship, but where are the vocals? So right. it was a very confusing. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, and also I think uh, there aren't any solos on the instrumental version. No, I don't remember any. Yeah, so you, you can play along, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Not you in this case. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just, um, you, you're talking about the fans and uh, 
Um, I think one thing that's probably um, a factor is that is that um, fans of progressive music are definitely not your your fly by night fans and, no. and this and that. Um, if you consider what you guys, I'm just curious as to your uh, opinion on the trajectory of the band. Images and Words was like a breakthrough, mm. okay, went gold in the States. And, uh, <coughs> and then um, Awake, considering it was like the grunge time, it was more successful than, you know, looking back you would have expected it to be. Sure. Um, and it went through, yeah, and then scenes from my memory, after falling into Affinity, um, it, it seemed to take a step up again. But then when you went for, uh, to Roadrunner Records, mm. so do you think going to, Roadrunner isn't really independent. Uh, in that right, sense. But do you think right. uh, going to a label where um, they're more specialised, I mean, has that made a big impact, do you think, for, for you guys, as in, you know, the focus? Because you were still, uh, obviously, on a, on a East, West or Atlantic or whatever. Yeah. You, were still, you still got, like, a good push, but do you think is there a big difference when you go to a label which is smaller? Absolutely. You know, what, what was happening with, um, with Atlantic was that that was the, the same record deal that we signed um, when we recorded Images and Words. Mm. So it, it went through the entire cycle of eight albums or whatever, all the way up through Octavarium. Um, I believe that was the last one on there. And uh, so, you know, because we were at that label for so long and so many, um, they went through so many personnel changes and mm -hmm. different presidents and different A&R people and it just wasn't the same anymore. So, you know, by the time we were, towards the last few albums it was just kind of like we would put them out and they would come out and then we would go on tour there wasn't really there wasn't any love there you know so you, think, you think it was like the kind of ground um, like a, the, the ground level work that you were doing yeah rather absolutely. than the labels uh, absolutely and, and then with Roadrunner uh, we noticed an immediate difference you know um, we signed with a label that understood um, our potential internationally and um, you know they know that we play at Wembley and, and sell it out, you know, but like they, the other label didn't really have a clue as to what we were, you know, and so they they set up the record, they marketed it properly, they, you know, put little videos on their site before the album came out, and we record, we uh, filmed music videos for the first time in years, and so it's all helped. Yeah, it had been a while since you've done a video, actually. Oh, yeah, a long time. Um,